All right, everybody, we are going to get started. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, super excited to have you with us and have so many of you joining us uh, for today's live cast. Uh, today, we're going to be getting into the tips for investing long distance or out of state. We have had so many requests on this topic on how can I invest somewhere else um, for a variety of different reasons. We're going to cover those and so much more. Uh, super excited for you to be with us. Um, take, get your pen and pencil out. Pen and pencil. <laughs> get your pen and paper out because uh, I think we're going to be going over a lot of things. And just so you know, these also, these live casts get recorded and you can watch them as a saved video as well on YouTube. Um, so love to have you join us for that. Um, let's just jump right into this, guys. Um, tips for investing long distance or out of state. What you're going to learn today. Um, every single week, I like to do a finding tip of the week. We're going to talk a little bit about divorced owners today. Um, we're going to talk about what is rent to purchase ratio, what you need to know about it, when you should think about investing out of state, the challenges to long distance out of state investing, my recommendations on some tools you can use if you're doing out of state deals. Our format that we follow every time, we do welcomes and updates, which we're doing now. We jump into a little bit to the real estate news. News. We come up with a finding tip of the week, we go through a topic of the week, uh, free t-shirt giveaway, um, which is one of the most popular, exciting segments of the show, as well as a free tool of the week. It's really important to me. I want to give you something every week that you can use to help you in your real estate investing. And I do that every single week. Absolutely. It's a free tool of the week. Now, this show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any financial moves, you want to consult with a real estate professional, attorney, CPA, or other professional in the subject matter. Everybody's situation is different. There's no one size fits all. DHM may receive payments on the show from sponsors, from guests in the forms of books, giveaways, items, discounts, other remediations. As with anything in life, results come from education, following a system, hard work, and determination to follow through until the end. All right, guys, welcome, welcome. Please uh, comment, put your first name and the city and state you're investing in. Uh, put it in the comments, even if you're watching this as a recorded video, put it down. I'd like to know where people are investing and I tailor a lot of content around where people are investing. And if you're watching these as a recorded video, please join us live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be here and live casting for all of you. Okay, our t-shirt giveaway of the week. What are we gonna give away? I am glad you asked. Let me show you a few shirts here. This is our summertime. Um, this is a very popular summertime shirt. This is our flippin' legend shirt. Um, wanna get you guys one of those. You might be the winner. We'll talk about how you can get it. This is my original, um, one of my favorites. I flippin' did it. Um, love that one. We also have, this is our project manager one. Um, I made it through rehab. That's uh, that's always a fun one for everybody. And then this is another, this is a summertime flip it, or I'm sorry, this is more of a fall baseball flipping legends uh, shirt. We've got these in variety of different sizes. Um, so whoever wins the t-shirt giveaway this week will let us know their size which one they like the best and we'll get the right size and then we'll get them the closest to what they like uh, from these shirts. We give away a shirt every single week. We pay for shipping, we pay for the shirt, we send it out your your way um, and it's super awesome to be able to do that. We love giving away our t-shirts and love seeing people watching them. At the end of the live cast, we'll announce last week's winner. So starting now on, you're working on next week's winner because last week's winner has already been determined and I'll be announcing that at the end of today. So. Um, please, if you become the winner, please take a picture of you in the shirt and post it on our Facebook. This goes for people that have already been the winner and haven't done this yet. We'd really love to see you in our shirts. Go to facebook.com backslash do hard money and post a picture of you in the shirt. We would really appreciate it. So who wants a free shirt? I hope you're raising your hand right now. I want a free shirt. Um, so ask great questions and leaving positive comments. That's what's going to help you become the winner of the week. High interaction, uh, you know, going back and forth, engaging with other people, that type of stuff. Commenting on the recording video. Um, once the video goes live, go and comment on that. That can earn you the shirt. And we choose one winner every single week, and that winner becomes our t-shirt winner of the week. So thank you for your feedback on that. Thank you for your participation. I really enjoy it. 
Um, if you guys love these live casts and I get so much positive response from everybody, I know you do and you wanna see them continue. They are a lot of work. We're currently at 5,800 subscribers right now. And my goal is to get to 6,000 by the end of August. So I am looking for 200 new subscribers. So if you're currently not a subscriber to our Do Hard Money channel, please just go there right now. Go to YouTube, you hit the little subscribe button. It's great if you hit that bell notification as well. And one of the great things that I do every single day, I release a brand new video every single day. These are called Just Ask Ryan videos. These videos are five to 12 minutes um, and they cover a specific question. And they're questions you've been asking, um, like interest only loans or appraisal guarantee. What the heck? Um, so if you ask, if you have questions like that, you want to have the answer. If you watch one of these videos, type it in the comments. I create videos like this based upon pro popular demand and I want to create them for you as well. But one of the cool things is every day I come up with um, one of these videos where I answer a specific question that can be really helpful in your real estate investing, especially as you're learning and growing and trying to understand new things. And if you've got questions you don't have the answers to, you can type it in the comments there and I'll create a video just like that for you and everybody else, all my other amazing subscribers. Again, go hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. If you hit the thumbs up today, that is an extra bonus for me. It tells YouTube I'm doing a great job. Most people don't understand that YouTube doesn't show this video to everybody. They only send it to a select number of people where it's viewable. And the more people that like it, the more people they show it to. Um, and so when you hit that thumbs up button, it helps YouTube say this is good stuff, show it to more people. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification. Our YouTube channel is Do Hard Money. Um, and if you could leave a comment on the recorded video, it's a big help. And who knows, it might make you the t-shirt winner of the week if you did that. Um, but the biggest compliment you can possibly give me is telling somebody else about our YouTube channel. Um, it means a lot to me uh, to help people and to know you guys are enjoying what you're getting here. Okay, what you will get today, this is my free tool giveaway. I like to give something away every single week. We are giving away an assignment of contract. Now, this is something you use when you're wholesaling. If you get a property under contract and you wanna sell that contract to somebody else, this is an assignment of contract. Remember, there's three different ways uh, to do a wholesale deal with simultaneous closing, double closing, assignment of contract. This is one of those three ways in the form that you can actually use. Um, I will give you a link to download at the end of this live cast. Um, so that you can get that form as well and check it out. All right, guys, it's that time of the day where we've got to get into our real estate market update. What's happening in the real estate world around us and what do we need to do about it? All right, I'm getting famished. Okay, here we go. Evictions expected to spike as pandemic memorandum ends. I think I uh, stumbled over my words there more than once. Pandemic memorandum ends. Evictions, which have mostly been on pause during the pandemic, were expected to ramp up Monday after the Biden administration allowed the federal memorandum to expire over the weekend. Congress wasn't able to do anything to extend it. Um, the Biden administration announced Thursday it would be allowing the ban to expire arguing its hands were tied after the U.S. Supreme Court signaled the measure had to end. A housing market crash is coming. Here is how to prepare. This is interesting. How do we know that the meteoric rise in U.S. housing prices can be sustained? Common sense and history can't be sustained. How do we know this can't be sustained? Common sense and history. That said, if anybody tells you they can accurately predict the housing market will crash, check to see what they're selling, meaning you just never know. Again, nothing in the real estate is guaranteed, but the Federal Reserve plan to keep the prime rate, the rate at which banks loan money to one another low through 2022. There's also the issue of inventory. Due to material labor shortages, builders are nowhere near the pre-pandemic building levels. As long as there is little inventory, the homes for sale will likely continue to sell for a higher than expected price. Uh, according to Yahoo Finance, the housing boom is officially over. Home sales drop to new low. Sales of newly built homes in June fell 6.6% below the revisited May rate, revised re May rate. Um, Michael Good Goodman of Sherman 
Lumber previously told Geo Banking Rates that they expected demand to remain high for at least the next year and a half or so as many lumber companies with projects still in the books that are not yet completed. According to the New York Post, these are the five best markets to be investing in. Detroit, Michigan, San Francisco, California, Miami, Florida, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, don't get too discouraged just because you may not be in these um, cities. Doesn't mean you can't invest there, which is one of the topics we're talking about today is out-of-state investing, but there's opportunity all over. This is just where they're saying they have the best opportunity out there. All right, the U.S. market of housing starts to float back to earth. The US housing market appears to be strained under its own weight. Think of that, um, of its own pandemic driven success. The housing market isn't caving just yet. Um, we haven't, have we reached the peak? That's a possibility, but worst case scenario, I see it leveling off according to Peter Cardello, chief economist for Spartan Capital Securities. According to CNN, home renovation leads to discovery of 150 bowling balls under a family's porch. I could not believe this when I saw it. A Michigan man found an unusual surprise when he was doing his porch. Um, he found 158 bowling balls. Here's pictures of them. I thought that was simply incredible. Okay, um, bidding wars decline, which is another sign that the U.S. housing market is starting to ease. But competition is still white hot in many cities. The cutthroat conditions across the U.S., the real estate market are showing more signs of easing. Pending home sales surge higher, but economists warned that the housing market could soon hit a bottom. Pending home sales rose 8% in May compared with April, the National Association of Realtors. All signs saw an uptick in sales led by a 15.5% surge in the Northeast. The South saw the smallest increase with 4.9% uptick. Pending home sales surge higher, but economists warn that the housing market could soon hit bottom. Still, economists generally anticipate that the second half of 2021 will see a slowdown in the real estate transactions and mortgage applications are down. This is one of the things I find most interesting. The latest Mortgage Bankers Association uh, update said that mortgage applications are down 17% as they were a year ago. Well, what does this mean? If less people are applying for loans, there'll probably be less people buying loans. And some of that has to do with this phenomenon with average size loans. Just having a hard time finding these average size properties which means first time home buyers are getting squeezed out of the marketplace and are just throwing up their hands and saying, you know what? I don't know if we can buy right now. We're gonna have to wait and see what happens. As the housing boom begins to fizzle, weekly mortgage demand falls nearly 7%. Um, according to Mortgage Bankers Association, seasonal adjusted index, which is a little different than before, that's the lowest level in almost a year and a half. According to Realtor.com, pending home sales sink as housing markets fall back to earth. As indicated, existing home sales fell in April, suggesting that the housing market could be cooling in the face of home prices. Pending home sales dropped 4.14% in April compared with March. The National Association of Realtors reports on an annual basis, pending home sales were up nearly 52 percent. Nothing to panic about though, says Realtor.com. Contract signings are approaching pre-pandemic levels after big surge due to the lack of sufficient supply and affordability, says Lawrence Hume, chief economist. The upper end market is still moving sharply as inventory is more plentiful there. Um, here's the other good news. Lumber prices dropped more than 40% in June, a couple of months ago. The great lumber bubble of 2021 has popped. Earlier this year, lumber prices exploded due to a combination of reduced supply amid mill shutdowns and surging demand for new and improved homes. At one point, the lumber shortage led to the average price of a new single family home, increasing another $36,000. Okay, according to Market Watch, these are the cities that share the biggest share of homeowners in danger of foreclosure. This could be a great investment opportunity. You want to keep your eye out or start looking into it. One of the groups of homeowners continues to be behind on their mortgage payment. If that trend continues, it could threaten the strength of certainty of the real estate market across the country. Around 
14.7 of the 7.6 million FHA mortgage are outstanding or delinquent as of May, several months ago. Um, additionally, 10.5% of these loans are seriously delinquent 90 days or more. Now, keep in mind, not every house is an FHA loan. So it's 14% of those that are FHA loans. So you've got to take that into consideration as we're looking at it. These are the cities that we see are in danger. Atlanta, uh, Alpharetta, uh, of all in Georgia, Houston, um, Chicago, Dallas, um, Washington, uh, Baltimore, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Antonio, Fort Worth. We see uh, several Texases on this list and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Looks like there's gonna be some opportunity here and this shows you the percentage of people that are behind. If I'm looking to invest, those are some cities I should be considering. And if I live there even more, the better. Okay, June 2021 housing report. Um, I realize this, uh, we're waiting for some additional data coming out um, so we can give you July's, um, but the national Inventory of active listings declined by 43.1%. Um, inventory unsold homes included pending listings declined 20.3. Newly listed homes on the market are up 5.5% nationally compared to a year ago and 11.7% higher for larger metros over the last year. However, sellers are still listing at rates lower than previous. The June national median listing price for active listings was 385,000 up 12.7% compared to last year and the large metros saw median prices go up by 5.3% on average compared to the prior year. Nationally, typically homes spend 37 days on the market, much less than the 72 that we had last year at the same time. That is very interesting and something we all need to be aware of. I hope you've enjoyed our market update and some of the things that are happening around us. I think as a whole, I'm not overly concerned of the market. I think we're gonna start seeing a leveling off and it's just not gonna be as red hot with interest rates the way that they were. There's still enough demand for buyers. And I think there's a lot of buyers that are holding off that we started to see some prices falling or we saw some foreclosures that were occurring. Those would get gobbled up in the marketplace. So I see ourselves not being red hot like we used to be. I see it just starting to see some leveling off, but I don't think we're gonna see any significant price decline because there's a lot of pinup demand for buyers buyers that want to be buying that are not able to. Time will tell, but this is a great opportunity to be a real estate investor. Next segment we've got, here's our property finding tip of the week. And I need to grab a drink of water before we jump into that. Okay, each week I like to give you a property finding tip of the week. Whether you can find a property, uh, this one is divorced owners. Uh, changing in life situations typically create motivation for change. This also includes selling real estate. Typically when someone's getting divorced, there may be an interest in selling that property because they have to or because they want to. They don't wanna have the memories of the old spouse or whatever the case may be. For example, with a divorce, we've got memories on the home. Um, if there's lots of equity, they mean to sell it to split the funds. If both names are on the loan, they mean to sell it to get somebody off the loan. There may be some other reasons that they need to do that. But one of the things you need to realize is divorce is public information and you can have access to it. Uh, this is going to be a more targeted search list, active divorces that owns real estate, that has equity, um, there's much fewer records because we're getting very targeted with this list. But how can you find them? You can find them on the court records or you can use Investor's Edge. So you can go down to your county courthouse um, or you can use Investor's Edge to find these. You put in your city and state, Chicago, Illinois, for example, liens, bankruptcy, divorces. You do a quick search to see who has a divorce and, and then you can search on that. So let me give you a quick idea. If you don't wanna go down to the county recorders and sort through all those, which it sounds like a pain in the butt, um, I am going to look at Atlanta. Let's just look at Atlanta, Georgia here. And I'm gonna come here to my filters and I'm gonna to go to liens and then I am going to go to, that's the divorce filing date, has divorce. Let's just look at that. And then I'm also going to come here to valuation. Let's just say they've got to have, let's say 75,000 of equity. Um, and let's just see what we've got here. So we've got a lot of properties that's had a divorce, but I want to get somebody that's went through a divorce recently. Um, but, but, but come back here to the divorce records. I want somebody that's had a divorce in the last year. Went through a divorce in the last year. And so we're going to come back. 
I will just do that and see so we up. So I've got the dates wrong. Um, so boom. Um, from here, okay, maybe I'm doing this wrong here. Let's take off the date on the divorce here, and let's just come to, okay, includes the divorce. Um, oh, I'm sorry, has a divorce is what we're looking for here. And I'm gonna clear these dates. Uh, whoops, it keeps uh, giving me, I'm not on my regular computer. So, um, let's see here. Okay, let's just reset this. I'm doing something wrong. You know, I also have just my, just the divorce records. We can just come. Okay, these are active divorce records that I've got on quick list. So there are five active divorce cases that are currently going on that fit those criteria that I have. Those are ones that we could be going after. Look at the equity, 82, 700,000, 700,000, $90,000. So there's multiple ways that we can get to this data without having to go down to the county courthouse and Investor's Edge is a great way to do that. Again, this is a very targeted list. So contacting these people, you can go knock on the door if you're really ambitious. Um, you can call and do a skip trace. Let's see, where are we? There we are. Um, you can knock on the door, you can call and do a skip trace. Um, you'll need a skip trace first. If you want to call, you can text message them. You will have to skip trace first. Um, you can send postcards, you can do voice broadcasts. Um, so let's talk a little bit about postcards here for a minute. Um, I think this gets overlooked quite frequently. Postcards run about 50 to 60 cents, depending upon the volume. You don't need to skip trace to send a postcard. That's a misconception. Um, you want to send the postcard to where the property tax notice is actually being sent. One of the things I like to do is send the 4.2 by six, um, so four and a quarter rather than the oversized postcards. I find if somebody's gonna see it, they're gonna see it regardless if it's big or small. Um, so make sure you answer your phones though. You're spending a lot of money, so you wanna make sure you're actually going to answer your phone when those come in. And you're gonna have to do a lot of these divorces to find somebody, but it is a more highly motivated lead in most cases. All right, guys, it's time for us to get to our main event. Tips for investing long distance or out of state investing. What you're going to learn today is what a rent to a purchase ratio is, when you should think about investing out of state, challenges with investing long distance. My recommendation is some tools you should be using if you want to invest out of state. So why would you want to invest out of state? Well, um, one of the things you've got to look at if you're wanting to invest out of state is what's called the rent to purchase ratio. Um, you want to look at the competition that's in your area. Maybe there's lack of opportunities in your area. Uh, not enough volume in your area. These are reasons why you might be interested in investing out of state. There may be better profit margins if you invest out of state or more affordability, better opportunities for appreciation, price growth that could be happening in out of state areas than in your area. You might be looking to diversify. You may have some properties in your current area and you wanna buy some properties somewhere else. Or you may wanna invest where there's very landlord friendly laws instead of unfriendly laws where you may be located. Um, you may be in a place where property taxes are really expensive and so it uh, is cost prohibitive where you could go somewhere else where property tax are a lot more reasonable. So let's talk about these. First off, the rent to purchase ratio. This is the amount of the amount that you're buying plus the repairs divided by the monthly rent. So let's go through an example here. If you purchase the property for two hundred thousand and spent fifty thousand dollars on a remodel, your total cost is two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If you can rent the property for twenty five hundred dollars, that would be one percent in monthly rent for the property cost. One percent is ideal if you can find it. And that's why some people move to out-of-state investing because they're struggling to find that 1%. Uh, competition in the area. Many areas of the country have high concentration of real estate investors. This can make it much harder to find a property. It can drive up property values and offer prices. It can make it more difficult to break into the real estate investing business. And you may be able to find an area with much less competition to make it easier, which might be a motivation as to why you wanna move out of state to do some investing um, or invest out of state without moving. 
Um, the other thing you could run into is lack of opportunities in your area. You might live in a really small town or a rural area. It may be difficult um, to have enough opportunities um, or ongoing investments. You know, going to a larger market or city might be giving more opportunities. And, and I want to distinguish this. You don't necessarily need to invest out of state. Um, you could invest in your same state, but just in a different market within your same state. Could be an idea or you could be investing out of state as well. Next thing you get into is not enough volume in your area. There needs to be enough activity in your area. Properties that are on the market and are for sale, properties that have recently sold. If you're going to make the investment of time and money to grow your investing, make sure there is enough potential deals to be worth the actual investment. Meaning, you don't want to spend all this money on postcards and calling and everything else if there's not enough deals where it could even make sense for you. Um, the other thing we get into here is better profit margins. The profit margin is in your area may only be 5%. Another area may be 20%. So it might be worth going to a new area um, to do one deal where it would take you four deals in your specific market to make the same profit margin. These are another reason why you should be looking at investing out of state. And I'm not saying everybody should be investing out of state. These are reasons why people should be considering it and based upon your circumstances and what you're finding in your area, you've got to take it into consideration and make some choices. Um, the other thing you can run into here is more affordability. If the average home in your area sells for a million dollars, this can be hard to get a loan for. It can be hard to come up with a down payment. It may be easier to invest in an area where the average is $150,000. This is something a lot of people don't consider, but is the opportunity for more appreciation. One area may have 10% price increase and another one may have a negative 5% price increase. That was This would have to do with jobs, economic growth, and demand in the area. Those are all things to take in consideration in moving to an out of state or out of your area investment. Another one to consider is diversification, okay? Diversification is investing in different areas that can help you actually spread out your risk. If there was a big labor change, if there was an increase in property taxes, all of these things could have an impact on you investing in another state or another area. Another reason to invest out of state is landlord friendly laws. Some areas, it can take a year to evict a tenant. Other areas, it could take 45 days. They can take you time and cost you a lot of money. And even on a fix and flip, if you have a squatter, this could be applying to you. So it's something you need to take into consideration. Next is property taxes. A house in one area could have taxes of $800 a year and another area could have $10,000 taxes a year. This could impact your cash flow and your profits. Remember, you're paying for taxes even when you're flipping the property. Um, property tax is what we're talking about here. Let's jump into some challenges that you have in investing out of state, okay? There's several challenges. Getting good values on properties is a big challenge. Um, not accurate repair costs becomes a challenge. Quality of workmanship becomes a challenge. Harder to go see the property. Not having relationships in the area. Local knowledge, just knowing, hey, this is a this is an area to stay away from or be in and not realizing a bad area. Not aware of the local laws. Let's talk about each one of these, getting good values. There's a tendency to trust an agent or someone in the local area. So you've got to trust but verify. It's important to pull your own values. Um, one of the things to do this is having access to the MLS is really important. Having access to tax data is really important. And I'll show you a tool on how you can do this um, here in just a bit uh, when we talk about tools. Um, not accurate repair costs. It's easy to be taken advantage of when you're not at the property. Screening contractors for licensing and insurance is really important and getting references on general contractors is important as well. And I've put together an entire video that I've got on YouTube, how to properly vet a contractor. Um, check out that video on YouTube. It could be really helpful um, if you're trying to understand how to properly vet a contractor. It's even more important if you are investing out of your area or out of state. The other challenge you run into is quality of workmanship. It's really hard to judge the quality just by looking at the pictures. Pictures cannot show all the angles. 
I have found it best to do video walkthroughs where you use Zoom or you use FaceTime. Um, we have to do the videos together. I can ask some questions and have them slow down and show me the details. Zoom is one of the things we talked about earlier. Um, one of the other disadvantages is it's really hard to go see the property. It can be a long distance. It could be an airplane or a long drive. This can be very disruptive um, to your schedule, to what you, other things you have going on as well. One of the other challenges you're going to be faced against is not having relationships. Um, you need a good title company, real estate agent, attorney, general contractor, handyman, plumber, HVAC, electrician, and roofer. Those are all things you're going to need to have in your back pocket and you're going to have to establish those if you're investing out of state or out of your area. Next one is local product knowledge or local knowledge. This can be difficult. There are things you just may not understand unless you really know the area. And this is where a good agent can help. Not aware of the local laws can be very challenging. If you're familiar in your state, it may be completely different in different states. Strategies to invest out of state. There's wholesaling, there's rental properties, there's land flipping, there is fix and flipping. Um, those are all things we could be doing. And let's talk about these different investments and how they work in other states. Um, wholesaling. The wholesaling is the art of getting a property under contract selling the contract for a profit. This can be great because there's no repairs, which is a strategy that's commonly used out of state. You don't need to see the property and you can cancel the contract if you cannot find a buyer. This is really good for out of state investments. We also have rentals where you buy the property, fix the property up, rent for cash flow, um, getting tax write-offs for depreciation and repairs, amortization paying down the loan as well. Let's talk a little bit about land flip. It's a little uh, not as common. You buy the land, you resell the land. You don't have to deal with toilets or fix ups or anything else like that. Where a traditional fix up as we're talking about is one of the most difficult to do out of state. Um, there's lots of points of failure. You buy the house, you fix it up and you resell it for a profit. Um, now let's talk about a few steps you need to be considering if you are looking at investing out of state. One of the first things you need to do is determine the right marketplace, okay? Determine the right marketplace, build the right relationships um, with their trades, with your general contractors, your handyman, your title, your attorney, your real estate agent, your property management company. And let's jump in a little bit to talk about some tools that you're gonna need when you're investing out of state. And one of the big ones is FaceTime or Zoom. Um, you can also use YouTube for recorded videos if, the, um, if, if it's hard to get cell service or uh, um, internet service at that specific property. Another big tool is Investor's Edge. It gives you access to the MLS and tax records. Um, it, Blue Hammer is another one. It can help you estimate repair costs. Um, one of my favorites is School Report. There's called greatschools.com. Um, one of the things I like about school reports is typically if it's in a good school district, then it's a pretty good property to be flipping. There's going to be good demand for it. Um, so greatschools.com is one that I recommend. The other one is crime reports. There's crime everywhere, but you don't want to be in a high crime area where there's repetitive crimes and you want to know the severity of what types of crimes, like a shooting's a big deal. Um, so City Protect is one of the places that you can check it out. Um, another place to be checking out some tools is the Apartment or Rental Association. Um, you look at all online in your local areas because most of the areas will have a rental association. It's a great way to get some references, to network, uh, to try and find some of those tradesmen. And then it can also help you in your real estate investing and what you're trying to do there with the Apartment Association um, and the rentals. So these are some things you should be considering as you're looking to invest out of state or out of your area. All right, guys, if you are interested in our complete system that takes brand new investors through flipping their first home, it's called our Find Fun Flip System. We have dozens of hours of training, deal finding software, and access to our 100% financing loans. All you got to do is check us out at dohardmoney.com backslash get started dohardmoney.com backslash get started. Now, I promised you guys an assignment of contract and I want to deliver on that. So, um, 
dohardmoney.com backslash assignment dash of dash contract, or you can just text me your email address. Text me at 435-294-0433. Just put your email address there and I will get it sent out to you as well. Um, if you've enjoyed this live cast, please hit the thumbs up, the subscribe button, the bell notification. Um, our channel is Do Hard Money. Uh, leave a comment and tell somebody else about it is the biggest compliment you could possibly give me. Um, if you haven't gotten that assignment of contract yet, text me your email address to 435-294-0433 and we'll get you a copy of it. Um, I'd like to know future topics. What are some things you're interested in or would like to see for some future live cast topics? Um, here's some on the screen if you wanna type those in and let me know what things you'd like to see either in the chat or on the recorded video. Either way, we'll compile those and make some plans for future topics because we'd love to help you in your real estate investing and what you're trying to do. Now, if you've enjoyed what you've heard today, make sure you check us out, Income Hacker Podcast. You can do that on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever the case may be. Come check us out. It's called Income Hacker. If you haven't gotten that assignment of contract, get it now. Text me your email address to 435-294-0433. Okay, guys, it's that time of the day. Who is our t-shirt winner of the week? Um, well, let's get a drum roll, please. This is last week's winner. Your comments and everything from today will make up next week's winner. Our winner is Keith Jones. Big congratulations to Keith Jones. Keith, thank you for being our t-shirt winner. Thank you for your comments, your participation, your interest, everything that you're doing. Um, really appreciate you being with us. Um, Keith, what I need to have you do is email us, support at dohardmoney.com. Put in your the shirt winner, put your screen name, your mailing address, your cell phone, and your t-shirt size, and we'll send you out a free t-shirt on us. Um, really appreciate it, Keith. Uh, appreciate you being with us. Now, next week, if you want to find out who the winner is, join us next week um, so that we can see who the winner is for this uh, week's live cast. If you haven't already, get that assignment of contract. Text me your email address to 435-294-0433. Now, next Tuesday, um, we will be, uh, the topic will be how to scale your real estate investing portfolio wisely how you can do that the smart way in scaling your real estate portfolio. We're gonna go through some great examples and things that you really need to know about. That's gonna be next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, where you can find out if you're the t-shirt winner of the week. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you get that assignment of contract. Text me your email address to 435-294-0433. All right, guys, well, I have really enjoyed being with you today. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for listening to this. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Certainly love to have you. Make sure you text me so that you can get that assignment of contract. Make it a very profitable day, and we will see you next time, next week, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.